stop paying the performance price for your invisible objects. Today I'm going to tell you about the price and the costs that you are paying for just having invisible objects in your scene. And when I say invisible, I don't mean that they must be disabled or deactivated. It can be as simple as, you know, you see this bench, for example. I see the bench. No, I don't. I didn't touch anything. Okay, yes, I touched the camera, but that was about that. That is already an invisible object, or how I call that, an off-screen object. And are you paying a price for this bench? Yes, you are still paying prices for this bench. And this is going to cost you quite some juicy time from your CPU and maybe even GPU. But yeah, this is why I am here to tell you this bad news today. But don't worry, there are good news that I also have for you. You can do something about this. All right, so let's start with this simple concept. You might have objects that are visible and then you can justify all the prices that you are paying for them. But at some point they will not be visible. For example, when I just go behind the wall or when I look in the other way around, right? So the question is, what prices are you currently paying for these objects that you do not see at some point? Let me tell you of my classification system. So basically, for these objects, you are paying four different types of prices in terms of performance. The first one is the cooling price, right? Basically, in order for Unity to know whether this object is visible or not, Unity has to check its boundaries and might also need to check for occlusion cooling if you are using that. Okay? So all in all, we do these two types of cooling. We do frustron cooling to see if that's in the field of view, and then we do occlusion calling optionally to see if your bench in this case would be covered or hidden behind the wall no matter what this costs you some performance okay and there is no way to avoid that other than of course not using occlusion calling which can also bring you bad news right the second price that you are paying for invisible objects is the memory consumption I might not be able to see this bench, but you know what? It is still loaded. We load the textures, we load the measures, we load the shaders, we load so many things about that. Even just its existence as a game object is going to cost you some money. Either you see it or not, doesn't really matter. You are still paying the price. The other price that we are paying for this bench, no matter if we see it or not, is the behavioral price. What's that? Well, this bench might have some scripts attached to that, right? That might all the time be running, no matter if you're looking at it or not. Maybe we can also think about something like a fan or like this. Just imagine this thing would be glowing, right? And it would be animated or there was some fan spinning or something like this. That, you know, we could be paying the price for whenever we are looking at it, right? That gives you value because it looks cool. But do you need to run the scripts to, for example, rotate the fan or to change the lighting by adjusting the materials? If you are looking the other way around, no, we don't have to. And guess what? You are paying the price anyway by default, okay? The last type of price that I want to talk about is the rendering price. Because yes, it might be invisible, but that doesn't really mean you are not rendering it, okay? So for example, if I'm not using occlusion calling or if occlusion calling is not working well, these, uh, let's call nice pipes, sci-fi effects, object, whatever thing, this thing is still in my field of view. So if occlusion calling is not working correctly or is disabled, the CPU, and the GPU will still be rendering that even if it's invisible to the user. So in this case, you will be paying some price in terms of generating draw calls and probably even some overdraw if your render order is not uh, efficient, which tends not to be between you and me, okay? Now, what we are going to talk about today is how to avoid paying the price for behavioral costs. That means I have a fan spinning or something like this here. 
And now I want to stop executing that script when this object is invisible. Might be again invisible because I'm not looking at that. Or it might also be invisible because, you know, occlusion calling is correctly set. By the way, look at my video for occlusion calling. In which case, we also don't want to run these scripts that might be changing the material properties and might be doing some transforms. We don't have to pay for that. So for that, what you want to use is the calling group API. All right. The calling group API is just an API that's going to help you know and detect when your object is visible or invisible. You can also ask Unity to tell you or your script, hey, please let me know when this object becomes visible or invisible so I can do something about that. For example, if I knew that this object is now invisible, because I do this like with a camera, then I can just turn off my fan rotator animator visual booster script. I could just do that, right? Maybe as simple as doing an if not visible, then just do not execute this part of the animation changes, right? And that is the whole idea of the calling group API. You don't have to understand it fully. What I would suggest is that you understand first the concept. You are asking Unity to tell you about visibility changes, okay? And that is what Unity will do. It will just give you information about that. Let's see an example. Let's assume that we have a character and because of the art style, we want the character to look super red whenever the character becomes angry okay, or upset or furious because it has so little health left that there is no other thing that to do than to get super upset. So what we could do, for example, again, okay, this is just so the code kind of, I mean, it's C sharp, but I don't think that will compile. What we could do is to change the property main color to a color that we learn from whatever, from white to red, depending on the health, right? This color can be uh, the main color. It could also be a multiplier color. That's in not important right now. Now, on top of that, just to make it juicier, you can do also more costly operations here. Maybe if the guy is upset, you can also play some particles, right? Like sweat or steam, you know, it depends on your art style. Now let's assume this is expensive, okay? Or it doesn't even have to be expensive. Maybe you don't have to do it at all, right? So what do you do? Again, we use the cooling group API. How do we do this? In general, we have a few steps. First, we need to create a cooling group. Then we need to set it up by selecting target camera and by, um, you know, creating the bounding spheres that are going to define uh, the location where you want to check for visibility, the location and the radius. And then once this is done, oh, this is a typo. I need to fix this. Once this is done, then we can ask Unity, hey, is this guy visible? If it's visible, then we do the usual things, right? We want to spend our CPU cycles in changing the color, playing particles and such. And if it's not, then we don't. And in any case, for example, if the player can move, then we just need to update the position of this bounding sphere so it travels with the player. And that's about it, right? So if you want to understand how calling groups work and see more practical examples, including profiling, just check my performance task force in the lesson number, hmm, which lesson was it? Yeah, so number 26, in the lesson number 26, you will get to understand the cooling group API in detail and see some practical examples about how to use the nice cooling group API that can literally save your butt from performance bottlenecks when you run into this situation, which tends to be quite often, honestly.